In this video, we are going to understand what is the design intent of a part. The topics we'll cover on this lecture are what is the design intent, uh, we're going to make a comparison of two different intents of the same part, and we're going to see the behavior of these two intents when we make some changes by using the software SOLIDWORKS. Also, at the end of this video, we will see a little summary of what we learned. So what is the design intent? It is basically a set of rules that govern how our part is created, but also it affects how your 3D model behaves when some changes are made to the part. It includes basically two things, the parameters, which are the dimensions of the part, and also relations. Some examples of the relations are uh, symmetrical relationships or tangent relationships between different geometric characteristics of our part. Now, let's see a comparison of two different design intents of the same part. And I have put the word same with bold because since they have two different design intents, we cannot think of them as the same part. So as you can see, both of these parts are the same. This is the first design intent. In this design intent, every dimension or every parameter of this part is independent. As you can see, we have this 100 here. And even if this name dimension here is 100, there is no indication in our design intent that these two dimensions are related. They are the same, but not necessarily related. And we also have a 100 here. And again, this 100 is not related to the other two 100 dimensions. We also have another important part of this design intent which is the circle. We have three parameters that determine the location and the size of the circle. The size is determined by this 50 millimeter diameter and the location is determined by this 50 over here and this 50 over here. So this is the first design intent. Again, all the dimensions are independent from each other and there is no relationship between dimensions or features in this particular design intent. Now let's see the second design intent. As you can see, the figures are mostly the same. What changes are the dimensions. As you can see, we also have a 100 over here. But now it's telling us that we have a variable that it's called A. And this variable is equal to 100. And then this variable it's mentioned three times again in this design intent. We say, okay, this dimension here, it's also going to be A. So if we change this dimension to, let's say, 80, then this dimension over here, it's also going to change to 80. We also have another A variable here. And also, take a close look that the diameter of the circle, it's also dependent on this variable. And this variable divided by 2, which is equal to 50 millimeters of diameter of the circle. But most importantly, the location of the circle, it's determined by relationships because we say here through text that this circle should be centered all the time even if we make some changes this circle should remain centered on this face it has to be positioned exactly at that particular point so if we change the dimension a the center of the circle it's also going to be changed which is not the case in this design intent. Now, let's see how this affects when we perform changes to these parameters of these two parts by using the software SOLIDWORKS. So here we are in SOLIDWORKS and I have already built these two parts by using the two different design intents. Here in the left part of the software, we have a part that is called design int one, which is of course based on the first design intent we saw on the previous slide. On the right part, we have the design int two part. And what we're gonna see here is how, when we make some changes, the two different design intents are very, very different in how they behave. As you can see right now, both of these parts look exactly the same. So first, uh, let's change the length dimension to 50. This dimension here, which is the length, remember it was 100, and I'm going to change this to 50. I'm going to reveal the document. And here's the result. Of course, this dimension is shorter. Now, if we make the same change with this second part, which is again, remember the second design intent, 
if we make exactly the same change notice that we have a 100 a 100 and a 100 so if we change the same dimension i'm going to change this to 50. notice that once i rebuild this notice how the part shrink in the three dimensions but not only that if you remember in the second design intent the circle diameter was determined by this length so if we check this circle we can see that the diameter is 25 because we said in our design intent that this dimension should be a divided by 2 which in this case a it's equal to 50. that's why this circle it's smaller than this circle because this circle again has no relation whatsoever with this dimension now another thing is that this design intent said that this circle should always be uh, centered and as you can see it's centered in this face however you can see that this circle it's also centered in this face now let's make another change so if i change this dimension to 50 okay and this dimension to 50 also let's make this uh, a cube again so if i make those changes well i can see that the circle it's not center here because in this design intent we said that the location of this circle should be 50 measure from this face and 50 measure from the bottom face so if we see the front face of this design we see that both designs were the same at the beginning but now, since we made some changes, even if the changes were the same, the final part is very, very different. This is the importance of understanding the design intent of a part. Okay, so we are at the end of this video and what we cover is what is the design intent? Remember, it's the dimensions and the relationships that we have for a specific part. And we also cover the importance of the design intent when we make changes to the part. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.